Well, it might be opening day in Major League Baseball, but the college basketball world is still at the center of the sports world. Kevin McNamara from WPRO and KevinMacSports.com joining us now here on the Thursday Night Wrap. K-Mac, let's start with this. Uh, a lot of movement transfer-wise. We knew that was going to be the case again, even before the end of the season comes with the Final Four coming up this weekend. We'll get to that in just a minute, but a couple local squads have been busy with transfers, specifically URI and PC, both adding a few pieces recently uh, in the last couple days. Talk about both of the additions that, that those programs got and maybe how that helps their identity going forward for next season. Well, Providence is a significant addition. Uh, Al Durham was a four-year starter, two-year team captain, and scored over 1,000 points at Indiana. Clearly, a high-level player who will be an impact player with the Friars. Uh, cannot imagine how he's not uh, a starter and one of their top players. So really a, a key addition for the Friars. Uh, I don't know as much uh, about URI's addition. They clearly could use a, a lead guard to help replace Fat, Fat Russell. That said, you know, Jeremy Shepard's back. Uh, Ish Leggett is back. Uh, you know, they have some answers down there. Jalen Carey. Uh, but, but obviously David Cox or um, one more a veteran addition to the lineup. You can never have enough guards in college basketball. Ishmael El Amin, the son of the former UConn legend Khalid El Amin, who won a yeah. championship with the Huskies in 1999. Uh, Two-time All-Mac uh, second-team guard, so definitely brings in a lot of experience for the Rams. But as for the Friars, uh, we saw Nate Watson's back, Nate Noah Horkler's back. How about David Duke? Do you think David Duke could potentially test NBA draft waters? Where do you think he is right now in the process? That, that's the path that I, I'm expecting and hearing, is that David will apply for the draft. Uh, you know, in the old days, this is how it's supposed to work. You know, you're an underclassman, you're all all Big East, all ACC. You go through the process, you see what the pro pros think about you, you work out for some scouts, and then you make an educated decision. And I, I think that's exactly what David's going to do. How it's going to turn out in the end, uh, uh, unclear. I, I think he has a chance to get drafted. Does he have a chance to be in the first round? You know, he'd have to show well in the workouts. Uh, I think we all know that David's a very talented kid. He's a great person and I think that'll really shine well in his interviews with these teams what's different with the clock this year the NBA draft is not in June it's pushed back into July Ed Cooley or the David Dukes of the world who do apply won't have to return to college or let their coaches know they're returning to college until July so we could be asking this question for a long time all right, Cole Swider, former St. Andrews product, uh, one of the key local guys that, that's transferring, moving on from Villanova after three seasons. A bunch of schools have reached out to him. Uh, who, who do you think are the front runners? Uh, we saw Syracuse, Duke, and Xavier as his other finalists when he committed out of the prep ranks. Uh, who could be a finalist there, and, and what is the team getting for, with his skill set? Yeah, oh, oh, Providence was a finalist the first time around. I, I, think, I think the first time around for Cole and done with Villanova, Syracuse, and Providence, but Anyways, um, I, I think Indiana's involved. Syracuse is definitely involved. There's been a lot of coaches reaching out everywhere from Louisville to Duke to Washington. I, if I was Cole's you know, father and advisors, I would say make sure you land at a place where you know you will have a legitimate chance to start and to get more touches. You know, Cole Swider could have stayed at Villanova and had a big impact next year on a good team and maybe be back in the Sweet 16 like the Wildcats were this year. He wants a larger role. I totally appreciate that. Uh, there's the old line, don't mess with perfect. And it wasn't perfect at Villanova, but it was pretty good. It was. Uh, Final four coming up this weekend. There's one prohibitive favorite uh, in the Gonzaga Bulldogs. They're, I think, a 14-point favorite as of right now over UCLA in the national semifinal. Other side, Houston and Baylor. Who do you like advancing to the championship game? And if you do like Gonzaga to win it all, where would they rank, in your opinion? You've seen a lot of college hoops over the years among the greatest teams of all time? Yeah, uh, excellent question. I, I think uh, I've been picking against UCLA for weeks now, and uh, I'm not going to do that anymore. Uh, I, I'm going to continue to do that and pick Gonzaga to, to cover the spread and, and beat uh, UCLA. Baylor's been the second-best team all season. I think they're ready to win again. It's a great championship game. Watch out for Baylor in that championship game because they shoot the three. The only way you're going to beat Gonzaga is outscoring them, and the only way you're going to outscore them is make a ton of threes. That said, I like Gonzaga. They share the ball better than any team in a long time. I will say this. People are getting carried away. You know, the, the record could be 32-0, and 0, which is amazingly impressive and an unbelievable achievement. First 
undefeated national title is since 1976. But this is a totally different era in college basketball with the one and dones. For example, the Kentucky team of, was it 2012, 2013, with Anthony Davis was more talented than this team, uh, a better team than Gonzaga. All right, there's Kevin McNamara, WPRO Radio. You can check him out, 6 to 7 weeknights there, 99.7 FM, 6.30 AM, and on KevinMacSports.com. K-Mac, thanks so much. We'll have to have you again. Thank you, Maury.